Hello, welcome to today's lesson on dipole-dipole interactions and hydrogen bonding. I would love for you to take a look at these two molecules and make a prediction. How do you think these two molecules with charges on them are going to interact with each other? Using your knowledge of molecule polarity and drawing Lewis structures, draw the Lewis structure for bromomethane, which is CH3Br, and mark its partial charges. It should come out looking something like this. Of course, it doesn't matter exactly where the bromine is. It could be top, bottom, left, or right. Um, and the bromine is going to be the negative atom or region of this molecule because it has three lone pairs and it's the most electronegative of all of the elements in this compound. And then opposite the bromine is going to be the positive hydrogen. Using SNAP, you should be able to determine if this molecule is polar or nonpolar, which remember symmetrical, nonpolar, asymmetrical, polar is how we use SNAP. So looking at this, if we put the imaginary plus sign through the central atom of carbon, the top and the bottom both have hydrogens that checks out, but the left and the right of my molecule are not the same. One side's hydrogen and the other side is bromine. So for that reason, we are going to say this is an asymmetrical molecule that is polar. This is also indicated by the fact that you have a positive and a negative on this molecule. Polar really just means having poles like a positive and a negative end. In this molecule, electrons are being drawn towards bromine because bromine has the highest electronegativity. We draw this arrow to indicate the dipole moment or rather just the direction of where the electrons are going. The flat tail end of the arrow indicates the positive region and then the pointed head of the arrow indicates the negative region. Just like the question of the day, how do you think multiple bromomethane molecules would interact with each other? You have known for quite some time that positive and negative track, uh, charges attract each other. So if this molecule is polar with charges on it, we can make that same assumption that there's going to be some type of attraction or repulsion between the positive and negative ends of the molecule. And this kind of makes the molecule act like a magnet uh, because we have attractive forces that are gonna draw molecules together and we have repulsive forces that are going to force them apart from each other. We summarize these forces by calling them an intermolecular force, or rather a force of attraction between molecules that causes them to stick together, which is caused by their partial charges. Specifically, we have a name for a single type of intermolecular force, and that is a dipole-dipole force, which is the force of attraction between polar molecules. So in this picture, I kind of just have like amorphous blobs that represent molecules. And each one of them has a positive and a negative end. Somewhere on this molecule, there's a positive region and a negative region. Well, I should mention that they're partially positive and partially negative. That would be more appropriate. Um, so we have these green dots between a negative and a positive, green dots between a positive and a negative. And we're gathering now that the green dots represent attractive forces between my molecules. And then between negative and negative or positive and positive, my purple dashed lines very clearly are representing um, repulsive forces. And that is the intermolecular force. We have forces primarily of attraction that are going to hold these molecules close together. They're going to act like a bunch of little magnets when they're near each other. And that is because the molecule itself has partial positive and negative charges on it. You can kind of sort of relate this to the crystal lattice in ionic bonding. You have a full positive ion and a full negative ion, and they're going to hang out with each other because they are attracted to each other, positive and negative attract. It's kind of the same thing here, except it's not as strong of an attraction because it's not a full positive or a full negative. It's just a partial charge. There are some atoms specifically that have a super strong dipole-dipole force, and those are the elements F, O, and N, fluorine, oxygen, and nitrogen. These particular elements, when they're on a molecule, are going to increase the, the disparity between the positive and the negative in the molecule, and that is going to result in an extra strong dipole-dipole force that we call a hydrogen bond. It's very annoying that it is named a hydrogen bond because no part of this is a bond at all. Um, my understanding of it is that whoever initially discovered it 
thought it was a bond or that it was because the hydrogen must be in the molecule. I'll get to that in a second. Um, because there's a hydrogen in the molecule, there's a, a bond to a hydrogen. It's kind of like a misnomer. Anytime we have a polar molecule that has both a hydrogen and a fluorine or a hydrogen and an oxygen or a hydrogen and a nitrogen, our dipole-dipole force is going to be upgraded to an extra strong force that we call a hydrogen bond. The reason these elements are included in the hydrogen bonding umbrella is because they, for their size, really they have a very small radius, they have a crazy high electronegativity, which is going to help them draw in electrons very closely. Again, like I said, increasing the disparity between the positive and negative ends. Looking at these six formulas for polar molecules, take a second to determine if the primary intermolecular force between its molecules is a hydrogen bond or a dipole-dipole force. So here are your answers. I have given you across the top the primary examples of compounds that are used to explain hydrogen bonding. We have water, hydrofluoric acid, which we can also name hydrogen monofluoride. And then we have ammonia, who is hydro, uh, nitrogen trihydride. Ammonia is its common name. Those are the three primary examples for molecules that exhibit hydrogen bonding. Notice that each of those has a hydrogen in its formula, um, but they also have that magic thon element. <laughs> um, some kids flip it backwards and say that they've had enough of chemistry, NOF. Um, so you have to have the hydrogen and you have to have one of those special fun elements in order to get a hydrogen bond, but the molecule must also be polar. Typically when you have one of these uh, one of these atoms on here, you're going to have a polar molecule. Not all the time, of course, um, but when you do have the polar molecule with a hydrogen plus a fluorine, or a hydrogen plus an oxygen, or a hydrogen plus a nitrogen, your dipole-dipole force is upgraded in strength, really, to the hydrogen bond. Now, hydrochloric acid, HCl, and H2S only have dipole-dipole forces. They have polar molecules. Those molecules are going to act like little tiny magnets and kind of attract each other in whatever sample they're floating around in. So that's it on dipole-dipole forces and hydrogen bonding. I know it was quick, but um, the overview of this is quick. The application of it is gonna be a little bit more intense. So subscribe so you don't miss it. Ask any questions you have in the comment section below so that you're starting the next lesson on the right foot, and I'll see you there.